So you open up Blender, go to its video editor, import a video file, and everything's going good. But then you try to play it back and... Wow. 15 FPS. And now it's completely frozen. I guess that makes sense since I spent a mere $6,000 on my computer. Good evening, and welcome to Game Abuse Studios. In today's video, we'll be fixing the slow playback and seeking issues in Blender's video editor permanently. Yes, I said permanently. It's gonna go bye-bye. But the question is, how? Before I get into that, I'd like to say that my video editor probably looks different from yours. That's because I made a video about changing the default startup file. But you probably haven't seen it because YouTube kinda decided it sucked. So if you have no idea what's going on up to this point, go watch that video first. And also, before I get into it, go hit the like button so that I can get this video pushed all over YouTube. Yeah, also, uh, subscribe while you're at it. Thanks. Anyway, let's go ahead and import a video file. This is just some random footage I made for this video of me playing Dead Cells. The clip is just me walking from left to right for a very short amount of time. And as you can see, it's not really playing good at all. And scrubbing is even worse. It's... <laughs> it's not even moving. So we're going to have to somehow get rid of this lag. Luckily for us, Blender has a feature built into it that will do just that. In order to make the lag go away, we're going to be utilizing a little feature present in Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, Vegas Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and probably a lot more. That feature is a little something known as proxies. Proxies, at least here in Blender, are low quality AVI files rendered from the video files you import. And if you don't know how to import, go check out my last video. I covered basically everything. Anyway, the purpose of using proxies is to make video playback and seeking smooth and effortless. So how do you set them up? It's actually pretty simple. Down here, there's a menu, and that menu says proxy. In here, we find ourselves met with a few settings, but everything is already pretty much set up, so we're just gonna mess around with this one right here. This option is the option you're going to be using whenever you want to set the resolution of your video strips proxies. The resolution you choose really depends on the resolution and data rates your videos are running. If you're not crazy like I am, you might not even need to use proxies. Of course, I need them because I am crazy. I record in 4K set to lossless with the color space set to I444, also known as planar YUV444 for those of you who know what that means. It's basically just extra sampling so that reds and stuff don't get blurry. It also takes a lot more resources to record with that setting and a lot more resources to play it back. Screw you. No. And I'll just say right now, I literally could not edit my videos without proxies because no video player in existence can handle simply playing my videos without glitching out and spasming on the floor like a dying fish. Anyway, I've said enough. So before I wander off into the void rambling like a madman, let's go ahead and set up some proxies. First of all, make sure that the video you're wanting to make proxies for is the one that's selected. You can tell which one you have selected by the white border around it. And if you want to, you you can do this to multiple strips at a time. All you have to do is hold shift and select the other ones too. Then once you have the ones you want to make the proxies for selected, you're going to want to come over here and set the resolution. 50% will probably do the job, but I suggest setting it to 25% because that way you can be sure. Once you're done choosing your resolution, go ahead and hit OK. Now that that's done, we're going to want to hit the button right below the last one. Whenever you click this button and generate proxies for a video strip, Blender creates that low resolution AVI file file I mentioned earlier, but it won't use it until we tell it to. Up here in the preview window, there's a little teeny tiny arrow. That arrow is hiding a menu, and under that menu is a setting we need to go to. In order to expand the menu, all you have to do is click the arrow, or alternatively, you can press N on your keyboard with your mouse hovered over the preview to do the same thing. Anyway, under this menu, there are a few things that have changed since the last version of Blender, most notably the Use Proxies 
checkbox is already checked. We're going to want to leave that alone. But if you're running an older version of Blender, go ahead and check this. If it's not checked, you're not going to be using proxies. Anyway, here where it says proxy render, we're going to want to set the resolution to the same resolution we set down in the proxy menu, which is 25%. Now if I hit play, you can see that it plays back just fine. And now I can also scrub over the video with no lag whatsoever. But there's something else. You might have noticed that whenever I told Blender to use proxies, the resolution and quality went down dramatically. But don't worry, because it's not going to ruin your video. Proxies are just a way to make sure that your video editor runs smooth while you're editing. All it's doing is using that low resolution AVI file for the preview. And whenever you go to render your video, it's going to use the original file. Anyway, that right there is how you set up proxies. And yeah, that's all fine and good. But the problem is, from now on, you're going to have to come down here, set the resolution, and generate proxies for every single strip you import. Not to mention having to go back up there and set the resolution every single time you make a new project. And that can get really tedious really fast. Unless Blender had an update that makes it do it automatically. If it did, I'm unaware because I didn't check. So what I just did is how you set up proxies, but I said permanently. Yes, I said permanently. So why don't we go ahead and get into the real purpose of this video? See, there's a little something I've been holding out on. You can actually set it up in a way that Blender will automatically create proxies the moment you import a video. So you're never going to have to go down here and generate proxies ever again. Well, you might have to, but generally speaking, you won't. Because once it starts generating proxies, you can only stop it if you deliberately press that button right there, or by hitting Control Z. At that point, you would have to come back down here. Good job. All right, in order to pull this off, we're going to need a brand new project. So go ahead and open up a new project, but this time don't import anything. We're going to want to come down here again to the proxy menu, and we're going to want to set this to 25% yet again. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and go back up to the preview. Under the same menu we expanded earlier, we're going to set the proxy render to be 25% just like down there. And now we're going to want to unexpand the menu. Let's also go back down here and go back into the tool menu. We want to do this because literally everything we've done is about to be saved. When I say literally everything, I mean literally everything. Everything, including what menu you're in and even how far down you've scrolled. So don't do anything weird. Now to finally set these settings in stone, let's go up to File, Defaults, and save our startup file. Now whenever you open up Blender and import a video file, it's going to automatically create proxies and set the resolution of your video strips to 25%. And while I could say that's everything for the video, as usual, there is one more thing, and that's creating proxies for images. And while I don't recommend using them, you can in fact create proxies for images. However, you can't set it up to be done automatically. And that's okay, because proxies for images are rendered to JPG files, so they're going to lose any alpha transparency within the preview, because JPG does not support transparency. Luckily, images tend to run smooth regardless, so I only recommend using proxies for very large images, like a full-size screenshot of a web page. Ew. Gross. That's the documentation for the data transfer modifier. I never thought I'd see that again. Please excuse me while I go hide in the corner and cry. When it comes to images, even going without using proxies, they still run pretty good. So honestly, I would just leave it alone. Anyway, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video and if you got something out of it, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future uploads. And as always, thanks for watching.